Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Are you all ready for the Word? Family, get out those notebooks, those Bibles, those pens, and we're gonna dive into the Word of God. And I know it's gonna bring transformation within our lives. The, 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 the hashtag of our message today is I am the sermon. Say it with me. I am the sermon. I am Come the on, sermon. say it one more time. Say, I am the sermon. I am the there sermon. you go. That's the hashtag. That's the, the title of the message. It's going on from Fructify. And I'll, I'll, I'll recap uh, in, in a short while. But Matthew 9, 35, it says, Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, uh, teaching in the synagogues, uh, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. When he saw the multitudes, the Bible says he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And may God bless the reading of the word. Well, before we get into this text and into the scripture, I just want to recap on the word that has been going out the last couple of weeks on fructify. And it's so important to be able to tie the whole Bible together so that we can have understanding, so that we can become that which God has always destined us to be. So we're made in the image, in the likeness of God. And then Genesis 1 and verse 28 says, Then God blessed man, male and female, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue and have dominion. So let's speak about that blessing. Fructify, be fruitful, then multiply out of the fruit of who you are, more seed. So that's multiplication. Then with that multiplication, you start permeating and filling the earth, who you are, uh, what God has placed within you permeates the earth. And by that, we are subduing evil by, by doing good, by uh, being who God has called us. We're subduing evil. And then the Bible says, now govern rule. And we know that another word for that is tend and tend. And, th and that's what we looked at last week, right? Tending, tending the sheep, you know, looking after the sheep. We'll, we'll get to that just now. So, so that's why understand to walk on the earth, you are a verb. You're not, you're not a noun. You're, you're a verb. God has called us to verb, fructify, multiply, fill the earth, subdue and have dominion, which means what? You are a force. Just by being who you are, you are an energy. You are a force. But the question is, are you a force for God or against God? Are you a force for evil? Or are you a force for good? Because if you are made in the image of God and you've been born on this earth, you are a force. God's got a plan for your life. But are you going to submit and follow His plan or are you going to live for yourself? And that's why He says, Matthew 12, 30, He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. The New Living Translation says, who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me, the Bible says, is actually working against me. And that's why it's so important as a church, as a body, that we understand the Word of God and that we now become that which God has called us to be. So let me quickly take you through the stuff we've done. So how do we do this? Can't do this out of ourselves. Because we're made in the image of God. We function through the power of God. And that's why Genesis 2, 7, the Bible says that he formed man of the dust of the earth and then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being, right? Now what happened? With all this blessing spoken over man, Adam and Eve went and messed up, right? Sin came into this world. They did their own thing. They did not believe the word. They, uh, they, they, they went against God and they sinned against God, not trusting Him. But you know what? God loved them so much that He did, not, that he did not leave them in their condition. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 that He went and He clothed them with animal skin. That immediately we see that blood was, was spilled. And the, 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 when he said, don't clothe yourselves with fig leaves, but let me clothe you with animal skin, we see that there was a sacrifice made. And what was that pointing to? 
that was pointing not to something, it was pointing to someone. It was pointing to Jesus Christ who would eventually die on the cross of Calvary so that we can fulfill the original plan that God had for you and for me. Isn't that incredible? So once again, it is through Christ. So how do you multiply then? How do you get to that place? In fulfilling, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. How do we get to that place where we walk in the blessing of God for our lives? Well, obviously, you need to become a child of God. You need to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ means, first of all, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to invite Him into your life. Out of yourself, you can't change. You can't transform your own life. Look, you can modify your behavior to a certain degree through discipline and self-control, but you can't change your heart. You can't change your nature. No, we're born into sin. We're born into a sinful nature. You don't have to teach a child how to sin. You don't have to teach a child how to lie. You don't have to teach a, a, a child how to to deceive? No, <laughs> they, they learn it out of themselves. But you see, that's why within our life, we need to get to that place where we say, Lord, we need you to change and transform who we are so that we can and, uh, walk and function in the original plan of God for our lives because we made in His image. Anything less than that is a waste. So how do we do that? By becoming a child of God and then being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why unless you've come to that place where you haven't made a decision and say, Lord, I'm gonna follow you. Wherever you want me to go, I'm gonna do what you want me to do. You see, when you get to that place, you'll have an understanding of the things of God. If, you, if you're not saved and you don't have Jesus within you, you'll never understand the things we preach. You'll never understand uh, the Bible. You can go read the Bible. You'll never understand the Bible unless you first give your life to God and say, Lord, I need you in everything that I am, everything that I do, Lord, I need you within my life. God will come, place His Spirit within you and you will never be the same again. And that's why Matthew 13, remember we spoke about that? He says, 13, he says, therefore I speak in Matthew 13, verse 13 says, therefore I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. See, if you're not a child of God sold out to the Lord, you won't understand the things of the Lord. You won't see, you'll see, but not see. You hear, but not hear. And the reason for this verse 15, for the hearts of the people have grown, gone dull. And then he says the following. He says, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn the Bible says, so that I can heal them. So how do we get to that place of understanding of the original plan and destiny that God has for your life? Because He formed you while still in your mother's womb. God knew you, God formed you, God got a plan for your life. God was excited about you before you were born. He was excited about you. You see, how do we get to that place where we walk in that destiny of God for our lives? While well, the Bible says we need to turn, turn. Turn. You were going this direction and you go in the opposite direction. Not add God to your lifestyle, add Jesus to your lifestyle. Now you say, Lord, I want everything you have. For me. I deny everything where I come from. I need you in everything that I am and everything that I do. And you know what? Then God will give you understanding. And as you turn, what will God do? He will heal you. He'll heal your marriage. He'll heal your family. He'll heal your children. Uh, he'll heal your community. He'll heal our nation. He'll heal this continent. If we repent, the Bible says we need to repent. We need to turn. So once you've given your life to Jesus, only then you can walk in the promise. And what is the promise? He says, and in your seed, Acts chapter 3, 25, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Remember the promise is never about you being blessed. It means that through you, the families of the earth will, are being blessed, which means what? You need to be blessed for others to be blessed, right? But you see, the goal is never your blessing. The goal is always to be a conduit of God's blessing, a conduit of God's grace, a conduit of God's love, to be the, 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 the river that flows through you so that others can be blessed, that others' lives can be changed. And that's what happens when you receive Jesus Christ into your life. It's not about me. It's not about, it's not about my little family and my little, my little zone and my little territory. No, what do we want to do? We want to multiply. We want to fill the earth. We want to permeate. We want to tend. We want to govern. We, we want to rule. 
So once again, that's the blessing. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, or fill the earth. That's what we mean, replenish the earth. Subdue and have dominion. That's God's original plan for your life. It's for, for our lives. That brings me to today's message. And I wanna just go through over this again. Matthew chapter nine, it says the following. Jesus went to all the cities in the village. What did he do? He was teaching in the synagogues. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and he was healing every sickness and every disease. Every disease. Say with me, teach, preach, heal. Teach, preach, heal. Come on, one more time. Say with me, preach, teach, heal. Preach, teach, heal. Say it again. Say with me, preach, teach, heal. Preach, teach, heal. Right? And then we see in verse 36, the Bible says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. Why? Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. The New Living Translation says they were confused and they were helpless. Why? They were like sheep and they had she- they, uh, without a shepherd. So the issue wasn't the disease. The issue wasn't the, the fights. The issue uh, wasn't the, the things that were taking place in the physical, but rather that there was no leader. There was no ruler. There was no person that was shepherding. And you can be a CEO and not be a shepherd. You can be a member of parliament and not be a shepherd. You can be a manager and not be a shepherd. A shepherd, just because you've got a position doesn't mean you're a shepherd. You're supposed to shepherd, but it doesn't mean that every, that's why you got hiling. Some people do it just for the money. Got, there's, no, they, they, there's no other reason they do than for the money or the acknowledgement or there's, there's, a, there's another reason why they do what they do. But we see here, Jesus says, the problem with the people that there was no shepherd, people that cared for the people, And that's why he says in verse uh, 37, he said, he said to the disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers, the workers of you, there's plenty of work. There's so much to do. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers of you, what must we do? Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So what do we need? We need Laborers. What do we need? Laborers. We need laborers. What do we need? Laborers. We need laborers. And what did Jesus do? How did he remedy that? Well, chapter 10, he called his 12 disciples to him. Then he empowered them, gave them power over unclean spirits, cast them out to heal all kinds of sickness and diseases. And then verse two says, now the names of the 12 apostles are these. So what do we see? First of all, they were disciples. And then you move from being a disciple to a, an apostle. What is an apostle? An apostle means sent one, being the shepherd, doing the work. But before you got to do that, you first got to be a, a person that, 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 that is disciple, that you've got you've to receive from somebody and learn and grow. And from being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you become an apostle. And now you are sent out to be able to do that which God wants you to do. The harvest truly is plenty, but the shepherds of you. Being a shepherd is not about a title, it's not a position, but it's taking responsibility for the sheep, getting involved in people's lives, being moved with compassion, seeing them. You've got to see the multitudes first, right? Many of us, we're so consumed with self. We don't see other people's issues. We don't see other people's problems. All we see is our own problems. Why? Because you haven't made the decision to be a shepherd. And that's why you'll stay in your issues. You'll stay in your problems because the only way you get out is to have vision, is to lift up your eyes and see the calling of God upon your life. So what do shepherds do? What do shepherds do? So shepherding is the work, getting involved in people's lives, being moved with compassion, caring for them. What do we need to pray for? We need to pray for uh, laborers. We need to pray for a team like Jesus. He got a team of 12 and then he sent them, he sent them out. So you've got to, you cannot do the work of God alone. It will overwhelm you. You've got to raise a team. But what do shepherds do? And this is where I want to spend some time on today. The Bible says in verse 35, Jesus teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel and healing every sickness and every disease. Say with me, teach, preach, heal. Teach, preach, heal. Say it again, say with me, teach, preach, heal. Teach, preach, Come on, say it again, say with me, teach, preach, heal. Teach, preach, heal. You see, as a shepherd, that is the makeup of who we are and what we do. 
And I'm going to take some time to explain every one of these. And uh, today I, I want to spend some time on the preaching part. And then I'll spend some time on the teaching part and the healing part. But today I want to spend some time on the preaching. The preaching is critical. The preaching is so important. Every single one of us are preachers. The question is, what are you preaching? All of us have got opinions. All of us are speaking. So every single one of us, we're preaching. Now the question is, who are you preaching for? Are you working with God or are you working against God? Are you working for God or are you working against God? That's the question because you are preaching, but what are you preaching? What are you preaching on a daily basis? What you're saying, is it preaching that Jesus is the life the truth, the life, and the way. Are we preaching that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega? Does it show in everything we are and everything we do? So we're all preaching, but what are we preaching? So when I talk about preaching, I'm not talking about what I'm doing here and, uh, you know, uh, 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 what I'm doing here today, you know, uh, sharing the message with you. And let me tell you, um, this is probably, uh, I preach all the time, every day, 24 seven, I am preaching. My life preaches, what I say preaches, who I am preaches. So, so what I'm sharing with you now uh, uh, on, on this day is with you, but you must know this is, this is only a part of who I am and I'm gonna explain that to you right now. So when we're talking about preaching, preaching is the public proclamation of Jesus as the Christ to the world. Let me say that again. When we talk about preaching, it is the public proclamation of Jesus as the Christ to the world. You know what I've seen is that the church as a whole has a tendency to lose sight of the person or lose sight of people and rather focus on the plan, rather focus on the organization. But it's important that we understand that people are God's method. Rather than looking for better methods, God is looking for better men. God is looking for better women. The shepherds, the shepherds, the laborers. That's why Jesus said, make people. He said, make disciples. Isn't that Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19? It says, make disciples of all nations. In other words, we are called to empower others. And making disciples, I mean, this is a very, very powerful concept. Making disciples gives us the what and it gives us the how. The what means that we need to make the disciples and it gives us the how. Disciples, right? The making disciples and the disciples. So empowering people. That's how we develop and we're growing. So a disciple is somebody that follows with the intent of becoming. Let me say that again. A disciple is one who follows with the intent of becoming. So when we make disciples, we are empowering people to develop and to grow. So how do we do that? By each and every one of us being an example, an example of, a, of, of living an empowered life every single day, 24 seven, Monday to Sunday, living an empowered life through Jesus. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, 19, he said, follow me and I will make you. This he said to his disciples. He said, follow me and I will make you. In other words, I will empower you. I will develop you to do what? to be fishers of men. You've been fishing in the world. That's one thing. He says, but I'm gonna take you to a new level. You are gonna become a fisher of men. In other words, I'm gonna teach you to empower others. I will empower you to empower others. I will empower you to empower others. And thus we see the effectiveness of the gospel is so dependent on the men and women that preach it the women, the, the, the people that proclaim it. So when we're talking about you are a preacher, um, your preaching is really about who you are, not so much about what you say. Yes, what you say, but you see what you say comes from who you are. And that's why when, when God declares in 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9, He says, the eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro, the eyes of God running over all the earth to show Himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect. The other translations is loyal uh, and blameless towards God. And He declares this to show the necessity of 
people and his dependence on them to be a channel through which he can exert his power. And thus we see the Holy Ghost does not flow through methods, but the Holy Ghost flows through people. Thus the method is always through people. There's no magical formula. It is people. Say with me, people. People. Come on, one more time. Say with me, people. people. God empowers people. That's why when we do what God wants us to do, the making of disciples, everything is through people. When talking about the G12 or the 12, everything is about people. It's about raising people. It's about taking responsibility for people, about empowering people. Everything. It's not about a method. It's not a magical method. It's what Jesus did. Um, it's uh, it's, it's the, the way the world works. So, so it's, the, it's the man that makes the preacher, but it's God that makes the man. Let me say that again. It's the man that makes the preacher, but it's God that makes the man. Are you hearing me about preaching? See, all of us are called to be preachers. Say with me, I am the sermon. I am the sermon. Say with me, I am the message. I am the message. Are you hearing me here today? See, God, you are the message. The messenger is more than the message. You are the message. Listen to me. Say with me, I am the message. Am the Say with message. me, I am the, I am the sermon. See, the preacher is more than the message. The preacher makes the sermon. Thus, you are the sermon. You are the message. Isn't that powerful? And that's why 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7, it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Within each and every one of us is a treasure that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. It's not our power. It's not what we can do, but it's the power that works in and through us. That's where the treasure is. And that, that's why preaching, as I'm standing here today, the, the hour that I'm preaching now, well, I think is a little bit less than that, right? But the time that I'm spending, that's not the sermon for the week. No, my life is a message. My family is a message. Where you are, you've got to know you are the message. Preaching is not a performance of an hour. It is an outflow of a life. That's what it is. And therefore, for each and every one of us, that's why it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says, you shall be my witnesses. In other words, you are the testimony of an encounter with the living God. When people look at you, they see God. When people encounter you, they encounter God. That's why all of us are called to be preachers. That's how you shepherd. You shepherd by preaching. But your life preaches. Your marriage preaches. The way you raise your children preaches. The way you handle conflict preaches. The way you deal with disappointments, that preaches. Everything you do preaches. That's it. Let's be a witness of the power of God moving in and through us, experiencing the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, and the power of God to be everything He wants us to be. You are. Say with me, I am the sermon. Am Come and say it one more time. I am the sermon. Am the sermon. So that's the, the genuine sermon, the genuine message in, in itself is actually life. It's life itself. You see, the message grows because the person grows. The message grows because you grow, okay? The message is forceful, why? Because the person is forceful. It's, it's, the message is passionate, why? Because you yourself, you're passionate. The message is holy, why? Because the person, the man, the woman that is preaching is, is holy. That's why the message is holy. The sermon is full of divine power and unction and passion, why? Because the man or woman that is preaching, might it be to their children, might it be to their, their spouse, uh, might it be to their colleagues, uh, might it be to uh, your neighborhood, wherever you are. See, the, 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 the message is divine and it's the divine unction of God. We see uh, Paul speaking about Jesus Christ uh, of the seed of David was raised from the dead. And then he says, he says the following, he says, according to my gospel. So we see that he personalizes this. And going down to verse 11, listen to what he says. He says, and this is a faithful saying. Listen to this. He says the following. He says, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. So once again, he's speaking about his life. He says, I've died to myself and this is the gospel. It's not about me. I've died to myself and therefore the life, the sermon, the message, what I'm preaching 
is the life. I have died to myself. He says, but now, he says, he says, but, uh, but we shall, he says, if we have died with him, we shall also live with him. Then he says the following, verse 12. And he says, and if we endure, we shall also reign with him, which means what? Not, not everybody endures. Not everybody endures. Some people start, but they don't finish. Not everybody endures. He says, but if you endure, he says that you will also reign with Him. See, not everybody has the faith to believe God. Not everybody has the faith to believe this Word. Not everybody has the faith to believe the promise, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue and have dominion, walking in the blessing of God, understanding that the blessing is not just for your family, but through you that all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That is God's plan. That is God's original blessing spoken over you. That is the promise. And thus we walk in the promise. We walk in the purpose and the Bible says, and if you endure in your labor, if you endure in your work, if you endure in being faithful in what God wants you to do, the Bible says you will also reign with Him. But now there's a negative side as well. He says, if we deny Him, if we deny Him, He says He will also deny us. If you deny the power of God, if you deny His grace, if you deny the ability for, of God to do the work within you, uh, verse 12, he says, uh, uh, he says, He will also deny you. And then verse 13 says the following, and if we are faithless, listen to this, if we are faithless, He says, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. That's a powerful statement, a very powerful statement. He says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. This is so powerful. See, you can, <laughs> you can walk around with your faithlessness. Say, Lord, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to trust you. I'm not going to trust your word. I don't believe this. It doesn't really matter. You won't walk in the victory that God has for you. If you deny him, because that's what the previous word says. It says there in verse 12, if, uh, if you deny him, God will deny you as well. So if we deny him, he will also deny us. He says, if we are faithless, he says, here's the thing, God remains faithful. Just because you're faithless, doesn't that mean that he's not gonna be faithful to others? You can be faithless, but those who have faith, God is faithful. And the Bible says, because he cannot deny himself. So you might be left behind. You might wallow in who you are, but God is gonna do what he needs to do. And the plan of God is gonna be fulfilled whether you are part of it or not. If you wanna be part of it, you can be part of it. Or if you deny God, you don't believe, you don't have the faith, God is still faithful even though you are faithless. God is faithful. He cannot deny Himself. So the question is, do you believe or not? What are you preaching? Oh, what are you preaching? What is your life preaching? What is your marriage preaching? What are your children preaching? What are you at work? What is your life preaching? Are you preaching disappointment, faithlessness, discouragement, depression? What are you preaching in your life? I can't do this. I don't have it. In other words, no hope, no hope for the future. What are you preaching? Or are you preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Say with me, I am the sermon. Am Come on, say it again. Say with me, I am the sermon. Am the say it again, sermon. I am the sermon. Say with me, I am the message. I am the message. You see, your life is the message. What are you preaching? And that's why he says, Paul says, my, my, my gospel. He says, my gospel. And when he talks about my gospel, it's not about his personal little habits that he has and the way he preaches and his style of preaching and the way he comes across and whether it's soft, whether it's loud, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's uh, uh, just... Um, you know, normal or whether it's wild, you know, uh, whatever it is, it's not about that. Or whether it's, um, you know, when he says my gospel, he's not saying it's for me or for selfish appropriation or for selfish gain. But rather what he's saying is that the gospel has become who I am. Paul is saying, I am the gospel. The gospel has done the work within my life. The gospel is Paul, has become Paul, and it is Paul. And the heart of the essence of the person named Paul is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is the message. He is the sermon. What God has done in and through his life is the message. Now listen to this, the preaching 
The preaching is but a voice, an extension of life. The voice, listen to this, the voice in silence dies. The text can be forgotten. The sermon can fade away from memory. We forget what we've heard. But here's the thing, the preacher lives. The preacher lives. How does the preacher live? Through the lives that have been impacted by who he is. See, that's why after I'm gone, after I've done, you can hear my message and uh, lives, you know, forget the message. You're not hearing my voice anymore, not seeing my texts anymore. But you see, at the end of the day, the message lives on through lives that have been touched and changed because the faith I had to preach the gospel through who I am. It's not just through words, but through my life. And that's why Paul says, he says in Romans chapter one and verse 16, he says, and that's why I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. It is the power of God to salvation. That's why I will not shy away from speaking to people. I will not shy away from preaching. And I want to encourage each and every one of you, keep preaching, keep preaching, keep preaching Jesus. Keep proclaiming Jesus Christ to the world through your actions, through your words, in your marriage, in your family, in the way you operate at work in everything that you do, preach the gospel. The message is not just in your words, but it is in who you are. You are a preacher preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why I will not be ashamed. Wherever you go, don't be ashamed of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why in verse 17, he says, for in the righteousness, for in it, in what? For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith. What? The, the just, just shall live, live by, by faith. faith. Now, Paul could preach that. See, Paul could preach the just shall live by faith. Why? He has a reference. What's his reference? His reference is his life. That's why he could say the just shall live by faith. Why? He lived by faith. He lived by faith. The sermon and the message cannot rise above the person. Dead preachers give out dead messages, dead sermons. And you know what? Dead sermons just kill and destroy. Everything depends on the spiritual heart of the preacher. And that's why we need to be courageous. We need to be heart filled. We need to be heroic and compassionate. We need to be fearless, dead to self, to take hold of, listen to me, to take hold of and shape a generation for the Lord. But many people I've met are just timid little, little uh, time servers. They're just serving their time out here on the earth till the day they die, trying to get as much comfort and as much pleasure, you know, in life till they die. That's all they are. They're just, they just time servers, timid little time servers, position seekers, trying to get the little slap on the back, trying to get acknowledgement to feel better about themselves. Men pleasers or, or even men fearers, scared of people. And their faith has such a weak grip on, on the Word of God. The, 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 such a weak grip on God and who He is and on His Word that at any time they can be moved to a place of denial, denying Christ by some little phase they're going through in their life, some little difficulty they're going through. Now suddenly they deny Jesus. Now suddenly they deny the cross. Now suddenly they, they don't understand. Why? Because it didn't work out exactly the way they wanted. And just a little, they got such a weak grip on who God is that they sell themselves out to the world. And the Bible says, you deny God. God says, I'll deny you. They cannot take hold of the church and they cannot take hold of the world for God. And that's why I want to encourage us. That's why we need to pray, people. That's why we need to pray. Look, the, the preaching man is, is, a, is a praying man. Every one of us, we preachers. Say with me, I am a preacher. Say with me, I am a preacher. Say with me, I am a sermon. Say with me, I am a message. That's who I am. You see, and, and when we're talking about a preaching man, a preaching woman, that's a praying man and a praying woman. 
Prayer is the preacher's mightiest weapon and almighty force in itself. It gives life and force to all. It's prayer that makes the man. Prayer makes the preacher. Prayer makes the pastor. Prayer makes the shepherd. Prayer makes the laborer. Prayer makes the, 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 the worker. And that's why at 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We need to call upon the name of the Lord. Why? Because we are all called to mold a generation for God, to shape a generation, to empower a generation, to develop a generation. How do we do that? Winning souls, making disciples, empowering others, laying down our lives and living for, for others. Listen to me, the gospel of Christ does not move by popular trends. You know, we're all on this trending, the, the Twitter trending. The gospel of, of, of Christ doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, uh, move on, on the trends of, of social media. And it has no self-propagating power. It moves as the men and the women who have charge of the message entrusted to them, it moves as they move. Where you move, the message moves. Where you go, the message goes. And that's why the preacher needs to impersonate the gospel. Everything we are, everything we do. And therefore, I want to close with this. You've heard the message of the Lord today that we are all responsible to shape this nation. It is not the government's responsibility. It's not the president's responsibility. Each and every single one of us have the responsibility to empower and to take charge of this nation. We are all preachers. Now, are you preaching? Are you denying the gospel where you deny the power of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or have you decided and said to the Lord, I'm gonna be the message. I am the sermon. Say with me, I am the sermon. Am say again, come and say with me, I am the sermon. God has called us to mold this generation, to mold this country. It is our responsibility to shepherd. It is our responsibility to tend. And as Jesus did it, what did you do? Teach, preach, heal. Say with me, teach, preach, heal. Teach, preach, heal. And today we looked at preach. Every single one of us, we are preachers. You don't need a physical stage. Wherever you speak is a stage. Where you are is a stage. Your gift, your talent is a stage. Your place where you stay is a stage. Your, your, your workplace is a stage. Wherever God has placed you, He's called you to be the gospel, to be the message. He has called you to preach. Amen. Now I want us to pray together. And I wonder if we can bow our heads, every head bowed, every eye closed. And as you heard me speak in the message earlier, that there is no way that we can get to the place of multiplication. We can get to the place of, of being a blessing to the families of the earth unless we have received Jesus Christ into our life. You will not understand the things of God until you've received Jesus Christ into your life. And what does that mean? It means repent, repent. What does repent mean? Repent means turn away from your old life and the old way of doing things. Say, Lord, I'm done with that. I need you in my life. And when you turn to God, God will come and change and transform your life. He'll forgive your sin and He'll change you. And therefore, I'm gonna pray. And if you are listening to this message and maybe you've moved away from God or maybe you've never given your life to Jesus before, I don't know where you find your place today. But God wants to bring about that change within your life. And I'm gonna to count to three. And if that's you, if you wanna receive Jesus Christ into your life, I'm gonna to count to three and I want you to say, yes, Lord. One, two, three. Yes, Lord. What did you say yes to? You said yes to receiving Jesus Christ into your life. And you know what? I'm gonna pray with you and God's gonna come and change and transform your life and you will never be the same again. Listen to what I'm saying. You'll never be the same again. So every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around so that no one's embarrassed. Say these words with me. Say with me, dear Lord, dear Lord I, need you in my life. I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Please forgive my sin. Take away the shame, Take away the, shame. The, guilt, the guilt, the condemnation. The condemnation. Change me, Lord. Take out this old nature and place your spirit within me. I'm done with the old and I receive the new. I trust you. I trust your word. It says, if I receive you and believe, I have the right to be called a child of God. And thank you, Lord. As from now, I am your child. I belong to you. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.
and amen. And Lord, I pray your blessing over all of those that have received you into their life, every curse broken over their life, every curse removed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You now belong to Jesus. Isn't that exciting? And uh, if you would just uh, click uh, the commit button um, on the, the live streaming or if you're watching by television, listening by radio, you can just go to our website, my3c.tv. Just go to the commit button. Just press there, commit and just fill out your details. And we wanna make sure you get everything you need so that you are able to grow. You need to grow. Listen to me, it's important that we connect with you so that you can become everything that God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we've listened to this word and you've heard the word of God. And just there we are, I want you to raise your hands up into the air and I want you to say these words with me. Save me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Here I am. Here I am. Called by you. Called by you. To be fruitful. To be fruitful. Multiply. Multiply. Fill the earth. Fill the earth. Subdue. Subdue. And have dominion. And have dominion. You have called me. You have called me. To tend, to, tend. To, govern, to govern, to feed the sheep, to, feed the sheep. to take a responsibility, to, take a responsibility. To, preach the gospel. to preach the gospel. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Out, of myself, Out of myself, I cannot do this. I, cannot do this. I, need, your Holy Spirit. I need your Holy Spirit. I need the power of the Holy Spirit upon my life. And I invite you. And I invite you. Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God. Just, fill me. just fill me, fill my life. Fill my life. Please, forgive Please forgive my faithlessness, my faithlessness. Where, I have doubted you. where I have doubted you, where I became discouraged, where I became discouraged. And, depressed. and depressed. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I, repent. I repent. Today, Today I, make a I make a decision to trust you. To trust you. You are the faithful one. You are the faithful one. And Lord, and Lord let, my life let my life preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. I am the sermon. I am the, sermon. I am the message, I am the message of, a Jesus of a Jesus that loves, that loves and that cares and that, cares and that changes and that, changes and that, transforms, and that transforms and that brings life. And that brings life. I, am the message. I am the message. My life is a message. My life is a message. I am the sermon, I am the sermon. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Isn't that incredible? Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Say with me, I am the sermon. I Come on, say it again. I am the sermon. I am the sermon. There you go. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to close, but before we do that, remember, we've got life class. If you haven't done life class, listen to me carefully. You need to grow in God. If you haven't done life class, you need to buy out the time. It's detrimental that you grow. We do life class on a Tuesday and it's important that you connect, uh, connect with a leader, somebody that you know within the church or connect with our office, get onto our website, get registered, but you need to do it. We do it on Zoom. We've got over two, 3,000 people in uh, life class and in uh, a Destiny training. We've got multiple classes taking place um, all over the place. So it's critical that you connect, do life class. If you've done life class and the encounter weekend and you, have, and, and, and you haven't started Destiny training, make sure you start destiny training. You have to be trained so that you can become that which God wants you to be. And we'll get into that message a little bit later, but I would encourage you, get more and more and more of the Word. So Tuesdays is training evening. Make sure that you are training. Tuesday evenings, we do training. Make sure you're in training. And if you're not in a cell, connect in a cell. Connect, once again, you can go online and we can connect you with somebody so that you can connect in a cell. Many of our cells are virtual groups that you can connect with, but you can connect in a cell that you can grow and become that which God wants you to be. Amen. Well, just there we are. Just lift up your hands unto the Lord. And Lord, Lord, I speak a blessing over each and every person as they go their different ways, Lord, that you'll be with them. The blessing of God will be upon them. And thank you, Lord, that your, your favour shall, 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 shall cover them and uh, that your face will shine upon them. Whatever you put your hands to will be blessed. Wherever you tread, you shall possess. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength. God will bless you this week in everything that you are and everything that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, we love you. God bless you. Shine upon you and be gracious.
3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 086-111-2345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.